Good morning, my name is Ashley Johnson and I'm the Business and Outreach Librarian at the Vernon Area Library. And today we're going to talk about intro to grant funding. Um, the Vernon Area Library subscribes to a database called Foundation Direct or it's Foundation Directory Online. Um, it's a tool that is owned and kind of operated by an organization called Candid, which is um, the largest philanthropic organization in the country, maybe in the world, or a philanthropic foundation development company. Um, so we've been subscribing to this tool for a few years at this point, and it's one of my favorite things that I get to talk about in my work. Um, that being said, if you need help, if you have questions, if you um, want to learn more about it, please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly. Um, that's kind of what I do at the library. So I can help you. We can set up a one-on-one. -on -one. I can help you with searching. Um, I can basically just do this class again, just you and I, whatever works for you. Um, but don't be shy to reach out. My email is ajohnson at vapld.info. And I'm always available to uh, do that for you and with you. Um, so that being said, we are going to look, I don't have a presentation per se. We're gonna actually go onto the web and look at what this database and this tool um, looks like and what it does. But we do have some slight complications in that um, COVID times means that there is digital access. So usually um, this tool is only available in the library. So when things get back to normal, there's a good chance that you won't be able to access this from home. But if you are a Vernon area card holder, you can access it from home. You just need to reach out to me and I share a private link with you. Um, otherwise you can still come to the library and uh, use it. And so we're gonna start there. I'm going to share my screen. Let's take that down. Um, and we're gonna start by looking at the, um, the Vernon Area Library website. This is our website. It is a, it is the, I'm gonna put the, um, it's vapld.info, put that in the chat. And the way that you access the tool is you go to research, online research and learning, and I like to just click on F for foundation directory online and scroll down and click in library use. There are two links here. Um, it's essentially two different databases. So foundation directory online is the one that if you're working for an organization or a you know, 501, you'll probably be using this. Foundation grants to individuals is a, se a separate um, tool that is intended for people that are not 501c3s or not um, established nonprofits. They are artists, they are students, they are looking for uh, scholarships. Um, I haven't done a lot of research into this tool. I do know that people have success funding projects with it. It's a little less, like Foundation Directory Online is very, very powerful. There are, I think, four to six million records on on there of foundations and, and grants that are available for people to use. And I can't say the same for the individual portion of it. But um, so that if you're in the library, that's how you will access it. Since I'm off site, I am in the comfort of my home. Um, sorry, let me hide this video panel. Oops, hide floating meeting controls. There we go. I'm going to, I've kind of already logged into it. Um, so this is what it looks like from the front. Foundation Directory Online, like I mentioned, is a tool that is owned by Candid and it is a, a research database that allows you to identify foundations that are funding projects. It allows you to see projects that have been funded um, by 
you know, recipients. So you're familiar with, I don't know, let's just say the Lake County Foundation. You can uh, search Lake County Foundation and see all the grants that they have received. Um, you can search by specific grants, so RFPs that are out there. And you can also find the actual, you know, PDFs of 990s or um, tax filing documents that are public information. And that's kind of how Foundation Directory organizes all this information. Essentially, they're going through all of these 990s that all of these organizations and nonprofits have filed every year um, and taking that that information out and fitting it into the way that their database works. So um, that's the beauty of it. Otherwise you'd be yeah, picking through 990s, which isn't maybe the most fun thing for most people. Sometimes I can glean a lot out of a 990 and it is interesting to look at, but it's definitely not uh, easy or um, searchable in any sort of, you know, understanding of the, of the word, but um, the grant makers on Foundation Directory are U.S. private foundations, corporate foundations and corporate giving programs, U.S. government grants, and international grant makers. So that's who this is going to be made up of. What you're not going to see is private funders. Um, there should be family foundations um, to an extent. You know, they're uh, smaller, so sometimes they don't necessarily all show up or newer, so some of the records are, I would say, not extremely up to date when you have to manage, you know, so many different organizations and foundations and 990s, it's hard to keep everything extremely up to date. And I think COVID might add a, an additional sort of challenge to that. So um, that's who we're looking at here. If you are at home, um, well, no, if you're using this, pro this, this database at all, um, what the first, this is the first page you'll see. And this, um, this bar on the front is sort of the easiest option for searching. It's keywords. So think like Google, Google is a keyword search bar. Um, it's not going to pull the most detailed or advanced search, but if you're looking for a particular organization, particular location or any sort of simple subject matter and you just want to see what pops up, it's a, it's a fun, easy way to do that. Um, I, being a librarian, don't necessarily, <laughs> I don't necessarily enjoy the, just the free-for-all, so um, I like to use the advanced search and filters button, so I'm going to click that here, and so here are a whole uh, additional fields become available. Um, this is kind of like a librarian. It's searching based on established and understood taxonomy or list of subject terms. So I wanted to actually share this with you guys. Um, taxonomy is sort of their classification system, their words that they use. And when you're using this side of the website, you need to use their words, um, which if you click on any one of these boxes, it, it walks you through it. But you, And you can start typing, but if it doesn't match one of the things that they um, you know, provide, you might run into trouble. But I think if you say, um, or let's say early childhood, It does, it does match for you, so if you know the words. And I think in a recent update, they did make it so it has um, somewhat of a pool of words that it would be like, sort of, did you mean? So you could, excuse me, you can try typing into those boxes and seeing what pops up. If something like this pops up, you know that this is part of their taxonomy. They created these, and this is how they organize the information. Um, this link here, I'm going to put it in the chat box. It's taxonomy.candid.org. Um, this is sort of a bird's eye view of every of the way that they organize things. And this is what I use when I'm working with um, people and organizations that are trying to kind of plan out their search. So um, I think 
as part of the uh, grant seeking and grant finding process, organization is key. I don't know, maybe that's another librarian part of me, but um, having an organized plan of how, what exactly you're looking for, you're going to have a better, um, I think a better outcome. So we're gonna just take a quick look at this. I have a sheet here um, that has it all. I did have a sheet here. Um, has it all mapped out? That's fine. In, in this, um, I'm going to click back and forth. But so the, their classification system or their taxonomy is based out uh, on subjects, populations, organization, organization type, transaction type, support strategy. Um, so if you go back here, subject area, geographic focus, these are. Um, this is how they organize it. So um, this tells you who, who are you trying to help population served? Um, so here in population served, if you're trying to identify the words that you want to um, use in there, if you just click on the populations tab, this will give you a better idea of um, how it works for them. So who are you helping? Let's say you're helping families. So let's see. Children and youth, you're helping preteens or adolescents. So now you know these are the um, defined keywords or the defined words that you should use when you're searching. And I would just jot those down. If you're, um, funding multiple projects at any given time, I would have a list of those terms that you might use for any given search or any given project that you're using or that you're looking to fund. So then when you go over here, you can say adolescents, and there it is. Um, this just gives you, I mean, you don't have to do it this way. You can obviously kind of like tinker around and just click on it and see, uh, see what what's available. Oops. Um, and kind of go from there. But I like this because it has it all laid out for you. And it's not like you're not locked in. Um, and so that was populations. The what, so the subject, that's important. What are you trying to do for them? Are you trying to give them safe drinking water, or you're trying to teach them about food waste. Environmental education is a, is a word that they would use. So you would say environmental, oops, education, and just click it. Um, so also you can see it's nested. So environment is the first environmental education, but also under environment, is um, environmental justice or um, environmental uh, biodiversity, domesticated animals. If you just click environment, you're going to have returns on your search that include, uh, you know, cli climate change. And that could be very far from what it is you're trying to do with your project. So um, I, tend to encourage folks to um, start more granulated, start at the, the farthest end of the nest that you can get to, and then work your way out as you see that you're not getting as many returns as you might need, or, um, you know, it's not, uh, it's just not working out. So, um, subject area is the who. Oops. Um, where's my little cheat sheet here? Subject area is the, the what, and the organization type is also the what. The how can be support strategy and transaction type. So, support strategy is an, another important. Um, Field that's under additional features. So if you click that little carrot, another sort of section of boxes pop up. And 
the support strategy for a lot of organizations is sort of the make or break part of this process. A lot of funders, I think more so, more so recently within the last, you know, five or 10 years, people are, funders are opening up to uh, general operating, but they, they didn't always. So if you need general operating, which a lot of organizations do, uh, you need to say that. Um, that being said, there's lots of different uh, options here. These in the dark uh, gray box are kind of, you know, they're additional. You don't need it, um, but it does really flush out that search. Um, so do you want to continue an existing program that you have going? You want to say that sometimes organizations really like to start and finish a project with, with um, an organization. So uh, if it's a continuing or even capital and infrastructure, so you need help keeping the lights on, that's another one you need to really identify that and say it. So um, transaction type is a good one too. So do you, do you only want cash grants or is your organization open to uh, matching grants? or um, services or uh, you know, any kind of given thing. But be aware that the more, uh, the more information you put in this search, the less, that's how granular it will be. You might see you know, six returns. They might be great, six of them, but they might, not work. So then that's when I, I recommend people to kind of back up and take a different scope at it. Um, so let's go to geographic focus. Um, geographic focus is the area that your mission or project will serve versus the location that will search the location of the, of the funder. So I am working with an organization that is funding projects in Lake County. I have found that um, as far as like the smaller organizations are concerned, it's, it's far more relevant and I think on par with their experience and what they need to do to start as small as possible. When you open it up to, you can say the state of Illinois, you could say, uh, Cook County, you could add multiple counties to it if that's where your project area is. Um, you can say United States. That's when you're going to get these giant organizations, right? Uh, foundation directory, like I mentioned, it um, it's connected to all the foundations. So think, you know, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Are you guys eligible for a Knight Foundation grant? Um, if that's kind of out of your league, which it is for most, um, I really highly recommend just kind of going small at first. So Lake County, you could even say like your town, depending on, I mean, probably not if you're in Buffalo Grove or Lincolnshire, because I don't know how many funders are very explicit about the um, project needing to be in Buffalo Grove or Lincolnshire. So that might be like the Buffalo Grove Foundation, which is a new, a new, um, community foundation that the, the village just sort of organized. Um, but Lake County is a little bit more reasonable. Um, so population served, we talked about it a little bit, but this would also include your age groups, seniors, ethnic and racial groups, people of Asian descent, family relationships. Are you helping foster children or adolescent parents? Um, your health, are you helping users, uh, people that are struggling with substance abuse? Um, religious group is this ident uh, specific to you know Jewish people? Uh, sexual identity, LGBTQ services, and uh, low income or poor people. They, these are populations. Um, so you can search all of those terms in that uh, taxonomy that I shared in the chat. So this will focus on this will this uh, option will focus who your search will benefit. Um, it's not always included in the grant funder information profile, so it could help, 
but it also could hinder. So if you are using all three of these subject area, geographic focus and population served and you're noticing that you're not getting a lot of returns, first take out population, um, population served. Just so you know, after we're done with this program, I will forward the um, handout that I have for this class. So um, it was, we are also, are also recording, so you can um, view it on the library's YouTube for a while. I know I'm kind of going fast, but there's, there's a lot to, a lot to talk about. Um, and at any moment you want clarification or if you have questions, please don't you know, hesitate to use the chat feature. I'm happy to pause and um, answer questions. So how are they getting this information? Like I mentioned, they're getting it off 990s, they're getting it off other foundation boards and they're getting it from fundraising websites. Um, is your search too narrow? You're only getting maybe like I said, six or 12 returns, um, and you would like more, back up a little bit, go out a little bit farther, include environment instead of just environmental education, um, take away a population serve. So for our, our search, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna say children and youth, environmental education in Lake County. And I would like a general, support grant, and I'm gonna leave it at that. I would also like to toggle this years of activity on the part of the organization. So there's a lot of time between, you know, what is it, 2003 and 2021. I only wanna see funders that have been active since 2016. Um, yeah. So you can, these are all things that you can play around with. Now let's, let's search. Uh, I'm gonna actually unclick US federal funders because the US federal government funds a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of projects. Um, it's also a complicated and fast moving process. So I would say federal funding or federal uh, grants projects are definitely a level, a level two, level three. Um, if you are finding success in your local and um, statewide grant process, move on to federal funders. If you have everything already organized and it's an annual project that's never changing, you have a budget, you have everything that you could ever possibly need and you see an awesome US um, federal fund, a federal funded project, go for it. A lot of times those projects have like 48 hour lead times. They open and then they close. And um, they're great if you can get them. There's a lot of them. It will muddy up our search. So I'm just gonna unclick that box. So let's search. Let's see what we come up with. Oh, goody. So there's only one and there's only one grant and there's only one recipient. Let's change it. Let's take out children and youth. Let's see what we got now. A little bit more, you can see it's growing a little bit more. Let's take out general support. Okay, this is, this is better for me. You could have probably also just opened it up to environmental or just environmental, but um, so let's scroll down a little bit and I'm gonna break this up and tell you a little bit more about this. Um, so foundation directory, the way it's set up, it's kind of color coded. Um, all of the blue are the grant makers. So those are the people that would be funding you. The orange are the grants that have been funded. Um, a, the teal is are the organizations that received those grants. And then all the way down at the bottom would be links to the PDF 990s, which if you are having trouble sleeping, might be a great way to bust any insomnia you're struggling with. The money, this is annually, so not over the course of our search, but um, $141,000 are going towards grants in this area. Um, and then, so it just kind of breaks it down. First, we're looking at grant makers. That's, this is the, the top five and there's 19 of them. I like to view all. So these are only the grant makers. 
Um, a lot of these probably look very familiar to you. Uh, Baxter International, AbbVie, very local and, uh, you know, relevant to the Chicago land. Um, grant seeking, but they're, they're uh, international and national organizations. So they have huge giving, huge total assets, amount normally funded, how many grants in this area and what are the prices for them or the amounts given. So if you were to just do it, let's just open up one of these big, big ones. If you hover over it, it gives you kind of a, um, like a spotlight gives you the top three subjects. So they say if your project fits in these top three subjects, um, it's maybe a good fit. How many grants they've awarded, a lot. Um, and then down on the bottom, it has the uh, links to any recent news on Baxter. And um, if you click on it, this is the uh, funder profile. So all funders have a profile, but not all profiles are created equal. Baxter is obviously a giant company with a large corporate responsibility foundation. Um, and this is the most recent five years of that organization's giving and uh, what they tend to fund and how they tend to fund it. So in the purple, you'll see the top five are health, big surprise, education, human services, public safety, international relations. So if your project falls in one of those subjects, maybe a, a Baxter grant is for you. Um, location, where is it all going? So this is all, um, you can click on it and you'd be able to see all of the recipients in any of these states. I'm not gonna do it, it's, it's color coded so you can see how many um, where the, how much money in the, in the area, but if you hover over it, you could see in this, excuse me, in the state of Illinois in the last five years, they've funded over 2,700 grants to 627 recipients at um, just over $4.2 million in the last five years. Um, how big are the grants? This is also um, clickable you can click on them and see who of the 57 grant, who got um, you know, a $50,000 grant from Baxter. Um, I can, I'll do that, let's see. Let's do these ones. So here you see it's orange, so it's showing the grants. Um, it will show the grants. This, these are all to a charter school. So it looks like Maybe this is part of their, um, I don't know why they're all the same. Maybe that's a bad example. So in addition to these um, purple, teal and green sections, if you scroll down a little bit more, this is really the, the meat of the profile, right? It will tell you about its grants, a lot of charter school education, um, funding interests, where are they doing it? How are they doing it? To whom are they doing it? And what are the, um, you know, what does that taxonomy look like for Baxter? That same language is used over and over throughout the, the tool. So um, this is also kind of a cool way to see like, oh, there, that's the words that they're using for that. We do that, jot it down. Uh, dental care, diseases and conditions, that's what we do, <laughs> jot it down. I, you might not have known that those were uh, the, uh, the vocabulary that was, available to you, but keep a, keep a good list. Related organizations, so you can see if they have any sister uh, giving programs, what their mission is, what their background is, what their program areas are. Um, so each found, large enough foundations have different programs, um, matching gifts, uh, scholarship programs, prizes. These are all, um, different programs that Baxter Foundation leads. Um, a list of other funders to consider. So if, if, they, if they work for you, these other large funders might work for you as well. 
Um, and they might not be large. It might depend, you know, it obviously it depends. And again, not every profile is created equal. So if you're looking at a small family foundation or a small community foundation, they might ha not have um, as robust of a profile. So just a, just a thought is to um, know that not every profile is created equal. And then this is kind of the part that everybody wants to see application. What is the process to apply to a grant from Baxter? Um, and this also changes. Some of the smaller ones might say, email <laughs> Marsha at blah, blah, blah. Um, but this has a, a larger RFP process. Um, but it tells you a lot of information and it's not telling you that they're not accepting. It will say that as well. If they're not accepting, um, it will say we are not currently accepting. But sometimes that's out of date. So don't take everything that you see, uh, take everything that you see with a grain of salt and do your own detective work. Um, what are their giving limitations? What did their financials look like? A link to the 990s are here as well. The who's who, this is kind of a newer thing that they've added recently, but it is kind of their, uh, of the foundation, the foundation tree. So it's not gonna be the, the, organ, the actual um, Baxter business, it's the foundation uh, hierarchy and the foundation group um, tree. But this is great because if you're doing any sort of, uh, what is the word, prospecting in there, you need to get a warm introduction. What I like to do <laughs> is go on my LinkedIn and just type in someone's name and see if we have any uh, second or third degree connections and say, you know, oh, I worked with this person knows this person from five years ago. You know, I worked with this person five years ago. Reach out and say, how do you know Christine Fleming at, <laughs> at the Baxter Foundation? And they're like, oh, that's my aunt. You know, you might ask for a warm introduction and, you know, the general networking tips are apply here. Um, communications is that, that news piece. So the, I think it's fill in, what does P and D stand for? It's uh, philanthropic news daily or something like that. It's their free um, sort of news and uh, website, but you're, you're able to access it um, based on the organization here. Communications, how to contact them, what their website is. Um, so say Baxter is the funder for you. You're excited about this. It's going to work for you. Um, all the way up at the top at the record or their profile, there's this tools button. And this is kind of where if you're at the library and you're on um, our computer, if you click this little um, email, a PDF, the little uh, envelope icon, that will email you essentially this whole um, profile but things like you know being able to click and see where the um, you won't be able to do all of this clicking. It's not it's not live. It's more of a um, static profile. Whoops, a static profile. But you can save it. You'll have it. It will have everything that's on here, like the application and the RFP process, or um, other related organizations to, to look at. If you're on your own uh, computer, which you're totally allowed to do, bring your laptop into the library and just make sure you're on our Wi-Fi, you can just click and save the PDF straight to your own um, hard drive. So let's, I'm gonna back out here and talk a little bit more about saving, saving projects. Um, Say you've gone through, you're like, okay, that one works for me. I'm gonna just click that. Uh, let's look a lot around a little bit more. Um, I wanna see the ones that have the, what's the highest amount funded? So Chicago Community Trust is funding the most in this area. Chicago Community Trust is awesome. And um, while it does say that we only put Lake County, I wonder 
how much of that is actually, because I don't see the Lake County Community Trust on here. Um, the Chicago Community Trust and Lake County Trust are related <laughs> sisters. Um, so it might actually be Lake County that they're talking about, because uh, if you can, we said Lake County and they're telling us Chicago community, I know they have Cook County and Lake County and McHenry County and all the different um, collar counties have their own community trust, but they might be all lumped under the, the Chicago Community Foundation. But lucky for you and everyone that these organizations all have really awesome and robust websites. So that's kind of my, I guess, second tip is to, um, once you've identified the funder that you're interested in, this is great information. It's important to save it as far as your, your prospecting and your, your searching and your find and your seeking, but it's important to go straight to the horse's mouth or whatever, whatever the expression is. Um, this is just an aggregate of information that is gleaned from 990s. It might be out of date information. It might be, uh, it might be incorrect. So go straight to the foundation and see if they have a website or do your own research and identify who is the person to get in touch with and talk to somebody at that organization to find out if it is something that you should move forward with. There's no sense in putting in a bunch of work and then getting an email or a letter back after you've submitted a letter of interest, your budget, everything. And then they're saying, oh, you didn't know we stopped funding this program, you know, two years ago or something. So don't, don't do that. Uh, reach out to the organization directly. Um, so community, Chicago Community Trust, what they're funding, how many grants in what areas they're funding, how many of them are going to the state of Illinois and um, which projects in our area of search have been funded and when. So it looks like Ryerson Woods received a $75,000 grant from um, the Chicago Community Trust or maybe the Lake County Community Trust, we don't know, uh, on environmental education in 2017, which is great. I, I also encourage people to, if you have contacts at any of these places and you're trying to fund a project, um, you know, there's, there's enough money to go around. I know it sort of feels like, oh, I don't want to talk about, uh, I don't want to talk to the, the forest preserve about a project that I'm trying to fund because then the forest preserve is going to go and get that money. They have to do they have to make um, gifts. They have to do it, um, especially if it's a planned, if it's a part of a planned giving, you're, you're not going to get skipped. But what you can do is develop relationships you know you could have a relationship with someone at Ryerson Woods that can tell you uh you know this was how we did it this was a problem that we ran into don't be like us like let me tell you about the process or even sometimes they'll show you how they what they submitted what their um application looked like or what their letter looked like so um use similar organizations as partners instead of as um you know, competitors. I know that's hard when it's your, it's how you intend to make your money um, and how you're going to propel your projects. But it's, it's really, it's a strategy that I think helps people. Excuse me. Um, okay. So what else? We have, are there any questions? Please ask me questions if you have them. I'm gonna back out of here and talk a little bit more about saving things. So we said Chicago Community Trust works for us. We said that Baxter works for us. Going through and clicking them and making sure that they look good. Then you can go over here. So it's on a different page. It's not on the profile page. It's on this grant maker page. You can save a PDF of, once you click it, it says a list or the profile. So we clicked that. Um, we want the profile. So those large um, sheets with the maps and 
um, how much they funded and where they funded the information about the RFP. If you just do save the list, then it's gonna save you a, um, an Excel file of pertinent information like maybe the president, maybe their phone number, maybe the general, um, like their total assets, the total giving for that five-year period. It's gonna be on an Excel sheet though. So it's not gonna be that big um, detailed prospectus of, or you know, profile of the organization. Uh, maybe you want both. You could do both. Oop, oop. Click on save them. Uh, yeah. So that's that's how to save. Uh, let's go back to our search results here and take another look. Um, let's look at so those are the the grant makers. Let's look at the grants. Um, well, actually, let's look at the recipients. So I, I love this strategy where you're kind of working backwards. Um, if you are just starting out, your organization is new um, and you heard about it from an organization that you saw in another town, another state, you can look up other organizations and see um, what they, how they're funding projects. <laughs> so let's, let's just look at Ryerson Woods. I mean, they are um, an organization that's based out of Deerfield, um, active. They have a lot of um, public education and um, environmental, uh, they're grant funded. So this is like, it's a little bit of a different dashboard here. You're seeing what type of organizations are giving to Ryerson Woods. So how are they funding? Um, this is over the course. I'm not sure if this is the same five year. We've from 33. It might be that five year. I think all of these at a glance are five year. Um, time frames. So over the last year, over half of the funding that they've received is coming from community foundations. If you're a similar organization to Ryerson Woods, or you'd like to be thinking about funding from community organization, community foundations has, has helped them. Um, what's the second? It's independent foundations. So identifying organizations and uh, foundations on a tool like Foundation Directory Online is important to them public charities, community foundations, less so. Number of grants. So while they um, do get most of their money from community foundation, the bulk of them, so they're getting more independent foundation grants for less money, over half of them are coming from independent foundations versus over half of them are coming from community foundations in the amount wise. Does that make sense? So those independent foundations are probably, they probably have a staff of people that are working to just make sure that they keep getting, you know, 47 grants over the course of five years. That's pretty, you know, that's, there's a pretty loud beat to that drum. Um, where are the funders located? So locally, in the state of Illinois, so they're reaching out. Let's see what happens when you click. Oh, it doesn't. Sh Let's see. So 41 of the grants came from the state of Illinois, 28, 23 of them came from local. And then they got up international or national. Where are the funders located? internationally, what is this one? Illinois maybe, and then locally. And then how big are the grants? So majority of their grants are less than $5,000, which I think is quite common. I mean, it's like I said, it's harder, it's definitely harder to get a, a Knight Foundation grant than it is to get um, a grant from 
your local community foundation or your Rotary Club. So we can scroll down a little bit and get a little bit more information about these. Let's open it up. Let's sort it by year. So it's only showing that they received three grants in 2019. This is where it gets kind of tricky for me because I'm like, how? Uh, and only six of them are showing up. I don't, I don't understand this part, um, but you can see who they received them from. Maybe they're um, private grants. That's how you can go into their 990. Um, and then you can see like it was a it was a gift or something like that. Let's see if I can figure that out. Here we go. So they only have up until 2017 available. Um, let's look at it. I won't be offended if you completely check out at this point. Um, so this is a tax document. If you scroll down, you can see a lot of information on these. Um, how are they governed? How are they managed? Who are they paying? Um, how are they paying their trustees and their directors or even their employees? A lot of them are not getting paid. Their executive is getting 60 grants. It might be more, it might be less um, as far as things that we don't know about, um, you know, gifts and bonuses and stuff like that. Um, how much of their money is going towards programs? How much of their money is going towards, uh, how much of their money are they getting from investment income? Um, their total revenue for that year. Fundraising, contribution, gifts, and grants. So they, they got $141,000 from uh, contribution, gifts, and grants, 100,000 from fundraising. So that's pretty nice. Um, and then it's all totaled up here. Sometimes it has, well, we don't really care about their, their compensation. Maybe you do if you're trying to develop something. Um, if you are on the same you know, path as an organization like Ryerson Woods, but um, I don't know. Let me see here. I know that at times they have everything all mapped out. Maybe they won't on this one. I'm not seeing it. Sometimes they'll have like, okay, we got, you know, $25,000 from this family foundation, or um, we got, it's not on here. Well, anyways, thanks for going through that exercise with me. Sometimes they have, um, a, a very thorough list of where exactly all the money is coming from um, as you know, I mean, you had the, the numbers, the amounts there, but it didn't have the breakdown depending on the organization and the accountant, honestly, um, they have the, how many or how much from whom and how, like it'll say program, uh, program money or program fund from this family foundation, it'll tell you how much. So it, it kind of varies from organization to organization, but there's information to be gleaned from them if you are just starting out or if you wanna just know what 
um, an organization like you how they're funding projects. Um, okay. So that's the individual. Let's see what else we have here. What else we can do? Um, yeah, I think uh, when you're doing that reverse engineering, <laughs> reverse, this is a really great, um, tool, the, the keyword search. So uh, you can just say, you know, I want to know about, uh, let's say, mindful waste. Parenting. Oh. You want to know how um, any one particular organization is funding things or they're similar to you. You want to know how they're doing it. Let me go back. Mindful is an organization out of Barrington that focuses on um, food waste education at um, schools. So they're showing up, but look at their, their, their sort of profile isn't very um, robust. You can assess this grant maker. I think you can also be in touch with the foundation directory and candid to update your own funder profile. So if you want to um, make sure that all of your information is up to date, you can do that. Um, you can see their total assets. Let's click on this. Oh, we can't. So all we have for them, they haven't assessed the information and put it into um, make it very pretty is the 990s, but they have a, a recent 990 from uh, 2019. And so you can go through there and see, I'm not gonna, not gonna do this again, but you can see what their, um, what their returns are looking like for that year. And I think that 2019 would be probably the most recent for fiscal year 2020. Uh, if you're lucky, 2020, 2019 is probably the earliest that you'd see. So you can see who their um, president is, who their board is sometimes, depending on how thorough, and then their website, contact info, all of that. All right. So I have a few minutes. Um, I can stop sharing and... Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, like I said, if you are in the midst of a project that you need specific help with, I'm happy to do that with you. You just need to reach out to me directly. If you need that link from the library to be able to access it from home, if you're a Vernon area card holder, please email me and I can get that to you. And the um, Foundation directory online is available at other libraries. So if we aren't your home library and we aren't the closest to you, it's okay to look around and find other libraries that do provide access to this database because it is very um, helpful. It's almost the only place that you can find these inf this information that's in a searchable way. So um, if you are doing foundation work for any particular organization, um, I really do encourage you to become acclimated and become comfortable with foundation directory just because it's, it's the, the hot game in town. So, um, all right, if there aren't any questions, I will let everyone go off to their day. Um, it was great to talk about foundation directory. I very much enjoy doing it. And please don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions. Have a good one.